Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video, I want to take you through what I call my Shelly One failsafe. In a previous video, I showed how the detached mode of a Shelly One relay, with the help of Home Assistant, allows you to use your regular light switches with your smart bulbs. If you're not familiar with the detached mode of the Shelly One, it works by disconnecting the switch input from the relay inside. In the Shelly's normal operation, flicking the light switch on the wall will toggle the relay inside open and closed. In detached mode, the light switch no longer turns the relay on and off. So instead of the light switch controlling the smart bulb directly, the light switch is instead talking to software and the software is controlling the smart bulb. The upside is that flicking the light switch no longer kills power to your smart bulb, so you can still control it using an app or however. The obvious downside is that if the software isn't working, you can't control the light bulbs at all. And this is where my failsafe comes in. It comes in the form of a Python script and it essentially ensures that I can still use my light switches to control the smart bulbs, even if Home Assistant isn't running. Keep watching and I'll take you through why I created it and how it works and then I'll give you a demo. Before we begin, I should point out that this script only works for Wi-Fi enabled Shelly devices. Now, when I implemented this detached mode approach across the house, I was kind of vaguely aware that I'd run into problems if either Home Assistant or Node-RED were unavailable for any reason. As a user of both of these platforms for almost eight years now, I'm very confident in their reliability, but as a software engineer, I know that nothing in software is ever 100% reliable. At the time, I was also vaguely aware that Shelly One devices supported their own scripting language. I figured at some point I'd just write a script that would run on each of the Shellys, and if it detected a problem, would put the Shelly back into its toggle mode and that would restore the standard behavior of the light switch. I never did get around to doing that though. Over the years, this has resulted in complaints from my wife and kids, usually when I'm in the middle of updating Home Assistant and they'll shout up the stairs asking me why they can't turn on or off a particular light. However, late last year, this mild annoyance became a more serious problem. You see, I was doing some maintenance on my home server when I accidentally, inadvertently erased the entire hard drive of the server. This took out everything running on the server. I even lost remote access, which meant I had to go down to the garage, unplug the server, bring it upstairs and plug it back in. I then spent the next 90 minutes or so recovering the server from a backup. This little incident really got me thinking. What if something happened, Home Assistant or Node-RED, when I wasn't home to put it right? Would my wife and kids be left in darkness? Or would they be unable to turn the light switches off as they try to go to sleep? This was obviously something I needed to deal with straight away. So like all good husbands, I promptly forgot about it until some stranger on the internet reminded me about it. It was then that I discovered that the first generation of Shelly relays, like this one, don't actually support the scripting feature at all. And of course, all the Shelly One relays I'm using in my house are first generation. Whilst this is no doubt a testament to their reliability, some of the Shelly Ones I have are over six years old, it meant I needed an alternative approach. And this is what I came up with. I created four different Python scripts, uh, which all work in tandem to ensure that my physical light switches should always work. The main script is watchdog.py, and this is the one I mentioned at the top of the video. I run this script on a standalone Raspberry Pi that sits here on my office desk, and that keeps it independent from my home server. There's no point in running the watchdog 
on the hardware that it's watching. Let's now take a look at how it works. So here's a sample setup. We have our watchdog script, we have our instance of home assistant, and we have three Shelly One relays all in detached mode. Now when the watchdog starts, it reads in a .env file, and it reads in a setup.json file. And these contain information about Home Assistant and also information about the Shelly relays to control. I'll go into detail on both of those files later on in the video. Once it's started and it's up and running, it will connect to Home Assistant using a WebSocket. Aside from the initial uh, authentication messages, no other messages will be exchanged between the watchdog and Home Assistant for the duration of the connection. The watchdog will then sit there happily watching the connection to Home Assistant. Now let's imagine something goes wrong with Home Assistant. This will in turn cause the WebSocket connection to fail. And it's at this point that the watchdog will send a command to each of the Shelly One relays to put them into toggle mode. It will then try to reconnect to Home Assistant. So let's say Home Assistant comes back to life and at this point then the WebSocket will reconnect. The watchdog will then send commands to the Shelly One relays to put them back into detached mode. That's the theory. Now let me show you this in practice. I'm using my PC for this demo as I don't want to disturb my Raspberry Pi installation. But what I will show you is exactly what's happening on the Raspberry Pi. So I've got VS Code open in front of me here and I'm using that so I can show you both the execution of the scripts and the contents of the files without hopping around too much. So to begin I have the .env file that contains the address of Home Assistant and it contains the socket and then it also contains a token uh, for authentication. I also have the setup.json file and that contains the name of the Shelly One relay in the light fixture over my head. I'll come back to how to populate the setup.json file a little later on. Before we begin, let's just check the status of the button mode in the relay. And as you can see under the button type here, we have a detached switch. So I've just connected to this particular Shelly one using its IP address. I'll now start the watchdog. So as we can see, it has successfully connected to Home Assistant after exchanging those authentication messages. To simulate a failure, I'll now stop my test instance of Home Assistant. And as we can see, the watchdog has now detected the disconnection of the WebSocket, and it's now trying to find the IP addresses of the various names in the setup.json file. A few moments later. So we can see it's resolved the IP address for the Shelly in my file. And now it will attempt to set the button mode to toggle. And we can see that that was successful. And if we jump back to the portal for the Shelly and we refresh, we'll now see that it's switched to toggle mode. That means that if I now use the light switch behind me, it will actually power the Zigbee bulbs on and off. So they will now work regardless of the Zigbee controller. We'll also see now that it's attempting to reconnect to Home Assistant. So I'll now restart. And we should be able to see that it will reconnect successfully. And it indicated there that the failsafe was previously activated and it will now attempt to put all the Shellys back into their detached mode. So again, it will run through the same process, resolving their IP addresses. And now we can see it's setting the button type to detached. And another thing the script actually does is it will switch the relays on. So if somebody did uh, power the light off whilst it was in toggle mode, 
we want those relays to switch back on so that the smart bulbs are get power again. So if I jump into the Shelly one again and I refresh this, we should see now that it's back in detached mode. So now you've seen it in action, let me just dive into a little more detail. You've seen the watchdog in action, so let's look at the .env file and the setup.json files. So as mentioned, this is just a simple configuration file where you'll put in the IP address, the port and an authentication token. I do provide an env template file which you can use, it has all the various names and you can fill those in with your own values. So when you run this script, it will use MDNS, which is multicast DNS, to locate all the Shelly1 relays that are on the network. I've limited mine to search just for Shelly1 relays, but of course the script could be modified to search for different devices. As it finds the Shelly1 relays, it will then reach out to them using the API to check what their button mode is, and if it's detached, it will add the name of the device into the setup.json file. Of course, you're free to manually create or edit this file, but I think running the setup.py is a good place to start. The other two scripts are the failsafe Python script, and this is actually responsible for executing the failsafe. And there's also the restore, and that's responsible for putting the relays back into their detached mode. Both the failsafe and restore scripts are used by the watchdog itself. They contain all the necessary logic, but you can run them standalone if you want to understand how they work or do some testing on your own setup. As I showed at the start of the video, all of these scripts are up on GitHub and I'll add a link into the description. So that's all there is to it. Is it a perfect solution? No, far from it. If there was a problem with the network or the Wi-Fi, the watchdog script wouldn't be able to communicate with the Shellys to change their status. In my particular instance, if there was something wrong with Node Red, my watchdog wouldn't be aware as it's not monitoring Node Red, so it wouldn't be able to initiate the failsafe. The only way to make this detached mode setup truly reliable would be to have the script running on each of the individual Shellys so that they could respond independently. As I mentioned, the, the generation one Shelly relays I have can't run their own scripts. So that would require me to replace six or seven first gen relays that I have installed in the house. Maybe when the fourth generation Shelly relays come out, I might consider switching them over. For the time being, I'll just rely on my watchdog script. So let's wrap up. If you've enjoyed this video, please do click that like button as that helps with the algorithm. I do plan on implementing the local failsafe script for my Shelly Pro 4 devices. So be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that video. As I said, I'll include a link to the GitHub repo if you want to give my failsafe script a try. If you do give it a try, please let me know how you get on in the comments. I'd love to get some feedback. And if you have any suggestions for how to improve it or tweaks you'd like to see, I'm always happy to hear them. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.